All right, guys, here's a little bit more in-depth of a video on the T uh, Kenwood TS820 uh, that had the sporadic uh, VFO display. And uh, I just wanted to, to go a little bit more in-depth because I was kind of surprised with the number of views I got on the last video where all I really did was talk about um, the repair I did on, on this rig. I didn't actually show anything. And I felt like it didn't really, uh, didn't really accomplish much uh, other than me talking. So uh, I'll go a little bit more in-depth in this one and show you... Um, Primarily where I'm going to be focusing is on this unit right here. Uh, this this unit here is the DG1. And um, I'll show you the removal of that and uh, the cleaning and everything. Okay, so there are four screws underneath here. We've got one there. And another one right there. And then you've got two more. One's in this little... Uh, get to where I can actually show you here one that's in this little slotted area there and another one just adjacent to it over wow I can't even find where my camera's at here another one right in there see and that will those are the four bottom screws holding that uh, board in okay after those four screws are out up from the bottom you would disconnect that wiring harness that comes through from the bottom and then uh, undo this top harness and this board comes right up all right so once you remove the unit you can take the eight screws out and uh, slide the case off and then what I'm going to be looking for here is uh, bad solder joints uh, sometimes with age uh, the joints will go cold they'll um, They'll crack, they'll get like this halo ring around the uh, uh, the joint, and uh, sometimes you can visually see it. So that's what I'm going to be going for. So I'm going to be removing these boards uh, that are sandwiched together and looking at the joints there. Hopefully I don't have to reflow all of them. One more thing I want to show you about removing these boards that are sandwiched together is once you remove the four screws in the corners, right there, there, and there, uh, the board won't just pop up. There are um, like uh, connector pins that, that bridge these two boards together and you have to kind of uh, uh, shimmy the boards up a little bit. There's a strip there and a strip there and once you get it up you'll see pins come through and you, so you have to kind of work, work the board up and out and it'll be the same on the other side and these pins it looks like they, they remain in the center center of this sandwich of the board here the boards well looking at the back of the boards I didn't see many issues um, I don't have my magnification setup to use with the camera here but there are a few um, solder joints here that that have some uh, I don't know some old flux or something around them which is kind of odd because the vast majority of the other ones don't so I'm gonna reflow those. I'm gonna clean those up with some solder wick and reflow them. Uh, and you can see there's some joints that there's some uh, pins that don't have any solder, and those are pins that actually don't go to anything. Those are from uh, I guess unused pins on these ICs on the other side. So there are several that don't go to anything. They don't have a, a trace there. They don't have a solder pad there. They don't have anything. So, um, but this is what the two ports look like on the back side. And there's the front side. I'm also going to uh, use some deoxid on these uh, these pin strips here, and uh, see if that might help a little bit too. Okay, I got the DG1 unit back in its sandwich boards and uh, put it back in its case and then we'll get it back in the rig. Okay, here's the DG1 unit underside, uh, the plug that I actually didn't show disconnected. So this is the side that has the four screws there, there, and the other ones you can't see. So I'm going to hit this plug with some deoxid and put it on and off a few times and uh, see if I can't clean up those contacts a little bit. Okay, and here's top side and I'm going to hit this one also with some deoxid. And uh, clean it up a little bit, and then we'll fire it up.
Okay, I hooked up an external speaker since the top cover is still off, and we'll see uh, what we got. So one upside down. Oh, that's the uh, LED knob that I did. Kind of just because all the lamps will burn out. That's what I can do. Seems like it's staying pretty steady. But that's uh, all I did. This is the unit that I had a, a quicker video on um, maybe a week or so ago where I didn't actually show anything. I just ex explained what I did and uh, figured that wasn't doing any, anybody justice. That wasn't you know, doing any good. So this, hopefully this explains a little bit of something on how, at least in my situation, it uh, took a uh, rig with a um, erratic uh, VFO display and it actually made it uh, a functional radio again. So your mileage may vary, but hopefully this uh, helps somebody out. And that's it. Thanks for watching.